In today's Bootstrap how-to video, I'm gonna show you two ways that you can add Bootstrap to your project inside of VS Code. So open up your VS Code editor and just create a new project. I'm just gonna create a plain index.html here. And then from Bootstrap's site itself, I'm gonna grab one of these starter templates and I'll copy everything inside of the body code. Now, if you're wondering how I got to this page right here, from the Bootstrap site, click on examples. I scrolled slightly down and I clicked on this starter framework. All right, I'm just gonna paste this inside of my own HTML page. And then the only thing I'm gonna do right now is get rid of the script tag, which is linking to a file that doesn't exist for us. Okay, I'll save that and I'm gonna open this up in my browser. And that's what you should have if you're coding along. So now we need to get Bootstrap on our site. So for this option one, we're gonna download this source code. So we'll head back to the site, we'll click on download, and we're gonna click on this download source files. Now save that anywhere to your computer and then unzip it. You should see something similar to what I've got in front of me. The version I'm working with is Bootstrap 5.2. Now the folders we care about are this JS folder and this SCSS. That's gonna allow us to make changes to say the styling of the page, and then we'll use a plugin inside of VS Code to recompile our CSS. So let's copy SCSS and JS and we'll paste it into our own project folder. So when that's done, what you should have is your index page, an SCSS folder and a JS folder. Now I like to organize things slightly differently. You don't need to take this step. So I'm gonna create a new folder called assets and then I'm gonna drag the JS and the SCSS into that assets folder. Then inside of my assets, I'm gonna create a new folder called CSS. And the reason I'm doing this is because the SCSS contains our SAS files, our bootstrap source code. Now we're gonna use this plugin shortly that'll take all of those files and create a single CSS file for us. And I'm gonna place that inside of CSS just so that our code is slightly better organized. Now I want you to expand the SCSS folder. If this is your first time looking at this, what you're looking at here are the bootstrap core SAS files. In other words, all of that styling you get when you use Bootstrap, that's all coming from these files you can see in front of you here. So for example, if we click into buttons, you're gonna see, if you're not familiar with SAS, stuff that looks really weird to you. Now, I've got a SAS crash course out, and I'll put a link on screen right now. I recommend you take that course just so that you have a basic understanding of SAS, and then you can continue with this video. If you're comfortable with SAS, then you know how SAS works. You know that what we now need to do is get these files imported onto our own main SAS file. And then before that, we also need to import our own variable overrides. And that's gonna allow us to say, change the primary color of Bootstrap from the blue to whatever color we want. Okay, so we need to do two things at this stage now. The first thing is we somehow need to get access to all of these files. So the first question is, well, do we just import all of these one for one? And the answer to that is no. If you scroll down to the bottom, there's this bootstrap.scss. This is the main entry point for Bootstrap. This file imports all of these other files you can see in front of you. So all we need to do is inside of this scss, let's create a new file. We'll call it main.scss. You can call it whatever you want. And then all we have to do here now is import Bootstrap. Now it's worth also thinking about, do you want some sort of separation here? Will it confuse you if you store your own files inside of Bootstrap? For the sake of keeping this video simple, I'm gonna leave this as it is, but I probably would in a real project, uh, create my own source folder and then have an SCSS folder inside of that. But I'll leave that to you to decide what's best. Okay, so our next question is, well, how do we compile this? And you have many different options. Uh, a lot of people will use what's called build tool. Webpack, Parcel and Gulp are all examples of either build tools or task runners that can do what we now need to do, that can take this main file of ours and compile it into valid CSS. However, we're gonna keep things simple in this video and we're gonna install a plugin inside of VS Code. So click on that icon in the bottom right there and then type in SAS. And the one I've chosen is this SAS less stylus where you can see that icon right there. So click on install, I've already got it installed. Now we do need to make one amends. I want you to click on that gear icon right there select extension settings. Then you have to scroll down to where we see the settings for SCSS. Now be careful because this plugin does all sorts of different things. So you're gonna see pug, you're gonna see less, you're gonna see stylus. You're also gonna see SAS and that's not what we're after. We're after this one right here. Compile hero, 
scss output directory. So all we have to do is tell it where to place our CSS. Now, it will start in the same folder that our main.scss is located. So what I'm telling it here with the dot dot forward slash is I'm telling it go up one directory and then go into CSS, right? So let's just work this out. Here we are right there, right? Main.scss, we're inside of SCSS. So go up one directory, that puts us into assets, then go into CSS, which is that folder there, and it's gonna place a file called main.css. Now with that done, open up your main.scss, and at the bottom of your screen, if you're not seeing this compile hero on, and you're not seeing anything that says compile hero, just restart VS Code for me. But you should, when you now open up your main.scss, you should either automatically see compile hero on, or you'll see it like that, compile hero off. If you see that, just click on it. So now it's on, now we don't have to do anything. Anytime we make a change, compile hero will recompile bootstrap for us. So let's test that out. All right, I save my changes. You're not gonna see anything output, but have a look at that now. Inside of assets, CSS main, there you go. There's your compiled bootstrap. So this is now what we have to add onto our index.html. So let's go and add that on. I'm gonna place it just underneath my title. Now this will differ depending on how you've set up your own project, but it'll be from the root of your file or your folder. So, so that right there is start inside the folder in right now, then go into assets, then CSS and main.css. And that's now gonna fix bootstrap for us. So let's just reload this on the front page. And there you go, we've got our styling. So what about JavaScript now? Well, part of what I got you to do earlier was also transfer the source file for the JavaScript. But I think in hindsight, we can keep this simpler for this particular video. I think the people looking to work with Bootstrap the way we are in this video don't really want to recompile JavaScript in the same way that you'd want to recompile your SAS. So let's actually keep this easier. Let's go back to the Bootstrap site and where we downloaded our source. So from the homepage, just click on download. Instead of using the source files, let's just use the compiled JS. Now we can do this in two ways. You can download it and you can add it to your site, in which case get rid of that JS folder and then just link to it from inside your index. But an even easier way is simply just to use what's called a CDN or a content delivery network. So just scroll slightly down for me and you see where you've got this bootstrap bundle min.js. We're gonna copy that. Now I'm just gonna copy all this code. It's gonna include the CSS, but it's just easier for me than trying to select it. I'll go into my index.html. Let's scroll down to where we have the closing body tag and just above that, paste in that code. Now all we have to do is get rid of our CSS link style sheet. So all we're left with is this script import that's linking to the CDN. And that's it, now we have JavaScript on our site. We've got no errors in the console and we've also got bootstrap via the SAS. Now, so now the last thing for us to do for this first version is to say, well, how do we override Bootstrap, right? Because that's what you're after at this stage. You wanna be able to work with the source files and make changes. So let's say we wanna change our colors. Well, we've got this primary color right here. By default, it's blue. Let's just say we wanna set that to be red. Okay, the first thing that I'm gonna do is just make sure that we do have a primary example in our site and that BTN primary right there, that's what we've got. Now this requires you to understand SAS and also to know the exact variable name that you want to amend. So once more, if you haven't watched my SAS crash course, I'll put a link in the description of this video. I've also done a whole range of bootstrap how-tos. I'll link to those at some stage in this video. Uh, be sure to check out that playlist. So all we have to do now is inside of our main.css, we do one of two things. Either you set up a separate file, call it whatever you want, and then import it. Let's call it uh, bootstrap overrides or you could just put your overrides straight in here as well so let's say we want to make primary red now remember because we've got this compile hero on that's going to recompile every time we make a change so now all we have to do is look at it on the front end and there you go we've now changed the primary variable color and that's it for version number one our straightforward version what if you don't want to mess around with downloading anything manually yourself so let's make some changes here Let's go into our site and we're gonna get rid of this SCSS and we'll get rid of the JavaScript since we're not using it as well. And I'm gonna delete the main.css because we'll recompile it ourselves. 
So we're gonna use a package manager and I've chosen NPM. You could also choose Yarn as well. So what I need you to do now is open up your terminal. So terminal, new terminal. And if you've not worked with NPM before, it's just a way for us to easily get additional plugins on our site without the need to do any manual downloading. Just like, for example, we have had to do in this first version of installing Bootstrap. So to do that, we need to go in our terminal and type in npm init and then dash y. That's going to create a file called package.json. You can open it up right there. Now you can also use this package.json to recompile your bootstrap, but we've already got that working with the plugin. And for me, that's a more user friendly way. And that's what I'm going to focus on in this video. So all we now want to do is get bootstrap into our site. So again, in our terminal, we need to know what is the import code using NPM. Well, if you go back to the site, it's right there on the front. NPM I bootstrap, blah, blah, blah. So let's copy that. We'll paste it into our terminal and we'll let that run. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to fetch the bootstrap files and it's going to place it in our site in a folder called node underscore modules. So just like we had it inside of our folder called assets, now bootstrap is sitting inside of node modules and there it is right there. And remember that SCSS folder, that same folder we've just worked with? Well, there it is there, the exact same folder. But the benefit here is we've done this through NPM. So if we need to upgrade in the future, we can do all of this through NPM. Okay, so now all we have to do is set up that same main file. This time though, we're not gonna do it inside of node modules. Never touch any files inside of your node modules. So inside of our assets, let's create a new folder called SCSS. Let's create a new file called main.scss. Okay, and now we need to find our bootstrap file, right? Just like we have previously. So let's go import. And just like we did in the first version, we've just got to figure out, well, how do we get into our node modules folder? So it's going to be, let's go up one folder. Okay, that's not good enough. Let's go up another folder. All right, there's node modules. Great. There's bootstrap. Great. SCSS. And we're looking for our main bootstrap file. Perfect, right? Okay, and let's also cover setting a new color for, for primary so that we know we've reset it. We'll make it green. Everything's gonna recompile using that plugin that we installed. And now inside of our assets, CSS main.css, we've got our updated code, but now it's linking to Bootstrap inside of Node Modules. And if we refresh the page in the front end, there's our green button. And that is how you can install Bootstrap inside VS Code and recompile it as easily as possible. I hope you enjoyed the video. Check out my other playlist where you can see a whole range of Bootstrap topics. See you for my next Bootstrap how-to.